Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to graph a parabola using the vertex and the intercepts. Um, the other thing that I'm also going to cover is domain and range on what intervals the um, parabola is increasing or decreasing and also whether it opens up or down. Um, so the first thing that you want to look at when you have a parabola, it's always helpful to see whether your graph opens up or down. And you can always tell this by looking at the value that is in front of the x squared. If it's positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So this one is going to open up, which tells us that we will have a minimum point. So when we graph our vertex, it's going, or when we graph our parabola, it's going to open up. Okay, for the vertex, if you recall, to find the vertex, the vertex of a parabola is always at the coordinate negative b divided by 2a, comma f of negative b divided by 2a. So what that means is that if your equation is in standard form, um, where it goes ax squared plus bx plus c, where a represents the number in front of x squared, b represents the number in front of x. So all we have to do is plug those values into here. So to find the x coordinate of the vertex, I would just do negative 4 divided by 2 times my a term, which happens to be 1 in this case, so that gives me negative 2. And then to find the y coordinate, all I would have to do is find f of negative 2. So if I plug in negative 2 into here, be very careful about squaring a negative because when you square a negative and it's in the parentheses, it becomes a positive. If you don't put it in the parentheses, um, your calculator could give you negative 4, which will influence your answer. So then I would do plus 4 times negative 2. And if I simplify this, um, this gives me 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. So we can see that our vertex is at the point negative 2, negative 4. So on here, I would just go to where negative 2, 1, 2, and then turn and go down 1, 2, 3, 4. My scale for this one is I'm just going to count by negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then this would be 1, 2, 3. So I'm just going to count by 1s on my scale. It's important to know what you're counting by. So our vertex is going to be at negative 2, negative 4. If it asks you for the axis of symmetry, because that's a common question um, that when you're graphing these, it'll ask for the axis of symmetry. Remember that the axis of symmetry is just the vertical line that goes through the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's just the x equals negative b over 2a. So in this case, our axis of symmetry would simply be x equals negative 2. It's just this coordinate right here. So the axis of symmetry would be this vertical line right here that goes through the vertex. Okay, a lot of times when you are graphing these, they do require that you have the axis of symmetry. All right, so the last thing that we're going, uh, sorry, not the last thing, but the last thing that we need to graph this using um, the y-intercepts or the intercepts and the vertexes, we now need to find our x and our y-intercepts. So we want to find our x-intercepts and we want to find our y-intercepts. If you recall, the x-intercept is whatever value makes y zero, so the output zero. So if we go back to our equation, basically what we're going to do is we're going to replace f of x with zero, and we're going to solve x squared plus 4x equals zero to get the x-intercepts. So we would just have zero equals x squared plus 4x. And then we would factor this. Um, when we factor this, this becomes x plus 4 and I just undistributed an x. Since they both have an x in common, I can just take it out front. So we end up with x is either 0 or x is negative 4. Now remember, depending upon how they ask you to write the answer, if they ask for just an integer, then you would write it as x equals 0 comma x equals negative 4, or just 0 and negative 4. But if they ask you to write it as an ordered pair, you would write it as 0 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. So it really just depends on how you're asked to write it. So if I go ahead and plot those points, I would have 0, 0, 
and then one, two, three, four, negative four, zero. Okay, um, we can see that because this is zero, zero, that is the y-intercept. And the reason is, is because the y-intercept is found by doing f of zero. So if I replace both of my x's with zero, I really have zero squared plus four times zero, which gives me zero. So my y-intercept is zero, zero. If it asks for just an integer, you would leave it as zero. All right, so if I graph this, I would have a U-shaped graph that goes through those points where the axis of symmetry goes through the middle. A lot of times when you're graphing, it will ask you for the domain and the range. So if it does ask you for the domain and the range, remember the domain is your values that you can plug in for X. Anytime you have a parabola, your domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no restrictions on what I can plug in for x. It continues forever and ever in both directions to the left and to the right. The range is our y values, and we can see on this one that our range does not go all the way down to negative infinity. We don't include the axis of symmetry. We're simply looking at the range of the parabola itself. Okay, um, so the first time we hit anything on our y-axis is at negative 4. And so our range would go from negative 4 to positive infinity. Okay, another question that they may ask you with this is on what intervals is the function increasing? So if it asks you this question, on which intervals... Is the function increasing? And or decreasing? So they're going to ask you one or the other. And so we can look to see for increasing, that means that our values of y are going up for those particular values of x. So if you guys look at this, you can see that there's a turning point right here at the vertex at the negative 2, negative 4. This is our turning point. And so we can see that our y values are increasing starting at x is negative 2 and going forever until x is infinity. So when you write this, you always put it in parentheses. Don't ever put it in brackets because it doesn't include your starting point. So from negative 2 to infinity, this one is increasing. If it asks for decreasing, decreasing means that your y values are going down for those x values. Basically, that's what it's asking for is, for what x values are my y values decreasing from left to right? So if you look from here to here, all the way from negative infinity until negative 2 till our turning point, our graph is decreasing. So we could say that it's decreasing for the x coordinates from negative infinity to negative 2, all y coordinates are going down during that interval. So just a recap, remember that you can ask yourself if it's opening up or down by looking at the first number. If you look at the first number and it's positive, it will open up and you will have a minimum point. So if it asks you for the minimum point, the minimum point would be negative four because that's our lowest point on the graph, okay? Um, if you have a negative here, that means it's going to open downward and you would have a maximum point. The vertex is always found by this equation, negative b over 2a times f of negative b over 2a. The axis of symmetry always goes through the x-coordinate of um, the vertex, so it always goes through x equals negative b over 2a. And the x and y intercepts, the x intercepts are found by plugging in 0 for y. And y-intercepts are found by plugging in 0 for x. It's increasing wherever our y values for all the x values where y is going up. And it's decreasing for all of the y values where x is, sorry, for all of the x values where y is going down. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are other topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.